So, Stray just came out a few days ago. It's advertised as a story-driven adventure game about a stray cat becoming lost in an underground city inhabited by robots. The developers of this game use several methods to make this city feel unfamiliar and foreign to the player. These include fictional plants, alien-like creatures, and an original language used by the robots. In the time leading up to Stray's release, I didn't think much of the language being shown during marketing, but on launch day, we got this trailer. Oh, it's a cipher. So while I was originally planning to make a video about any hidden story elements I could find, I've decided to first solve this code and explain my process for doing so. Let's first create a chart with every letter, then insert all of the characters found in the phrase available now. Now we have nine letters without even launching the game. As an additional challenge, I'll try to complete this without advancing past the fourth chapter. This means that we'll barely even be done with the tutorial for this video, so no need to worry about any major spoilers. We'll start things off by finishing up the first chapter and taking a pretty nasty tumble into a pile of trash. Oh no! Fortunately, we're able to just take a nap and walk off our broken bones and internal bleeding into the second chapter, where we see our first title card. It looks like the game captions this one for us, since the name Dead City matches our partial code if we plug it into these characters. This makes the chapter title City, while the location is the Dead City. This gives us D, C, T, and Y. But now we start seeing some other languages. These handwritten notes look like they are inspired by East Asian languages like Japanese and Korean. Though, for reasons that I'll cover later, I don't think I can solve these, and instead we'll just be focusing on the cipher that we've already started. There's also just the word run written in plain English here, which shows that real languages did exist in this world at some point, while setting up some horror elements for later. Speaking of which, we've got a chase sequence right after this. We have to make sure we keep ahead of these little monsters while taking the right path, and stop. Let's look at this sign here. It's pretty obviously written in the game's primary language, and if we fill in what we already know, we can get a few more letters with some decently safe assumptions. These words on the right look like they could say lounge and here, giving us the letters H, R, U, and G. Don't spend too long looking at these signs though, or these creatures will catch you and cause a game over. Well, at least our code seems to accurately spell out the word dead here. If we successfully complete this segment and reach the third chapter, we see the next title card, which doesn't exactly match the English caption beneath it. We do have most of the letters needed to fill this in though, and with some light guesswork, we can assume that the chapter title is help, giving us the letter P, and that the location is blue 12 flat, which is a neat little reference to the game's developers and gives us the letter F. In this chapter, we get our own little robot companion called B12, who can help translate the language of the robots for us. Unfortunately, this mostly only applies to the other versions of code that don't actually seem to be solvable. Shortly after this, we reach the fourth chapter that is captioned with The Slums. The chapter title appears to be Home, giving us the letter M, and the location is decoded as Klumpk Part 1. Wait, this letter definitely should be an S instead of a C. Looking a bit closer, these letters do look really similar, but while the letter C has a line or a semicircle in the middle, the letter S has a dot instead. This chapter seems like the ending of the tutorial sequence, and going into it, we only have six letters left to go. This is also where I completely gave up trying to decode anything but the main language. These robot-inhabited slums are filled with signs and graffiti that can be translated by B12, but a lot of what we're told doesn't seem to line up. Some pieces of writing don't match the number of characters suggested by B12, and there are some inconsistencies like how these two signs show the exact same text but are translated in different ways. However, this is the translation that made me give up on this. <laughs> that is not what that says. Luckily, when B12 translates anything that fits into our code, it's usually pretty accurate. The most helpful thing we can find in the slums is the sheet music, as most of them are directly decoded by B12 down to the letter. The first two are Petite Vals and Ballad of the Lonely Robot, which checks out. Then we have Untitled, which doesn't really help us. 
The next two are The Way You Compute Tonight and Tomorrow's, once again lining up perfectly. A B12 says the next one is called Cool Down, while our cipher translates it to Come On. I'll just assume the cipher was correct on this one. The final two are called Mildly Important Information and Unreadable Sheet Music. The latter of which sounds surprisingly good for being called unreadable. These probably would have been helpful to collect earlier since we already have all their characters. Now, we should also note that different versions of the same letter pop up from time to time. This sign looks like it reads shop, giving another way of writing the letters P and O, and I think this sign says dental? which gives new versions of the letters D and E. Also, this sign in the bar looks like it uses the characters we're looking for, but it doesn't seem coherent. Oh, wait. There we go. It was just the word entrance after being encrypted and flipped horizontally. For simplicity's sake, I'll only include what seems to be the most formal version of each letter in our cipher. So, letters that come from something like a title card will take priority over stuff like graffiti or handwritten notes. This is where things start to slow down. We still have five letters to go, but I couldn't find them on any signs or documents around the city. On the rooftops, however, we can find a really small TV with a bunch of channels to flick through. Let's just scroll through a few, and there. This looks like the word jail, giving us the letter J. And the phrase at the bottom of another channel reads, Would you like to know more? Giving us the letter K. So now we're left with three letters. Q, X, and Z. Some of the least used letters in the English language. Nice. It took me about an hour of searching before realizing that the vending machines happen to use our code. If we zoom in right here on the water bottles, we see a character that isn't yet on our list. And I think we can safely assume that it says Aqua, checking off the letter Q. Now we have enough of our code to translate most of the game's text, and a lot of it actually seems to be written as lorem ipsum, a type of placeholder text that is often used to showcase a font without having any real meaning. The last two letters we're looking for don't show up in any of this though. This is where I hit a dead end. I spent another hour looking at pretty much every piece of text I could find in the slums, none of which I could confidently say included an X or a Z. But then, I remembered that the first piece of the cipher came from the reveal trailer, Revisiting the official game site, I zoomed into each picture until I noticed this sign, which I was able to translate to Repair. We can fix all. You bring. We fix. Perfect. After adding X to our list, all that's left is the letter Z. Unfortunately, I couldn't find this letter anywhere on the site. After this, I went back and searched the slums again. Nothing. I started back from the first chapter to make sure I didn't miss anything. Still nothing. I did notice some smaller things, like this sign that looks like it's the word shop flipped upside down, but nothing looked like it could be the letter Z. At this point, I decided to give up. I'm sure the cipher could be completed within the first four chapters with the help of a few more eyes, but I couldn't figure it out, and I just wanted to play through the rest of the game at this point. Though, it's a good thing I was still recording as I moved on to chapter 5. Oh. Oh, it says pizza! That's a Z! You know what, that's close enough to the start of the chapter, I'm gonna use it. So there we go. We stretched the rules a little bit, but this is our completed cipher. I'm pretty confident that this is fairly accurate, even with some weird translations like this poster that says Vaunted instead of Wanted, and this TV channel that says Aether instead of Weather. Just for fun, I've turned this into a font so I can type in this language whenever I want. So if I type out V limit into this document, it shows up like this. Here's another word that I'll let you decrypt on your own, and you should definitely think about listening to whatever it says. Please. I've included a link to download this font in the description for anyone that's interested. Let me know of any discoveries you make using this code, along with any other secrets about the language of the robots that I may have missed. Also, if you're interested in a video about the hidden story elements of this game, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'll probably just make another video about Elden Ring. Oh, wow. I really need more variety on this channel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.